I'm heading down to Doghouse Powder Coating to check out the process of sandblasting and powder coating my two new wheels. The four new tires on the Model A look pretty darn good as they are. This is the bent spoke wheel. But two of the wheels are going to get replaced with brand new ones. And I've ordered a new tire for the spare. But unfortunately, it's on back order. In addition, I'm going to replace all of the lug nuts with new ones, and I'm going to install new hubcaps. This is a new hubcap, and this is an old hubcap. Here I am at powder coating and media blasting. This is where the new wheels are going to get powder coated. I ordered these wheels online from Eckler's, and they come primed. But unfortunately, it's not the right primer for powder coating. It'll have to be sandblasted first. You know, the orange is kind of cool. Maybe I should go with orange. <laughs> <laughs> you do red, you hit the Texaco star. Yeah, make it red. <laughs> Quick tour of the powder coating shop. All right. Steve, the owner, is checking out the temperature of white, I guess. <laughs> wow. Do you ever bake bread or pizza in there? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Check this out. Ah. Nice shot here. This is all uh, primer. Oh, primer. Okay. Yeah, this will get a color coat over top of it. So how is it done with the wheels in? Is it a primer put on first? I can if the customer wants it on there. What do you normally do Normally for I wheels? just do a color coat. Yeah. Uh, the primer is more for stuff that's going to be out in the weather, salt water environment, stuff like that. Okay. So it's epoxy based, and most of the powders are polyester based. Model A wheels are blasted and ready to powder coat. You got a primer on there, right? No? This is the way they look. A little bit of a rough finish to it, which is perfect for the powder to stick to. So this is bare metal. What kind of metal? I call it white metal, it's just clean, there's no paint, no debris, no oil, grease, nothing on it. Wow. Actually kind of cool looking the way they are. <laughs> they would rest quickly, huh?
attention to detail here. Well, you do everything like it was your own, then you're all good. Well, there, it's good to go in the oven now. So when it goes to the oven, I have to get the substrate material up to about 375 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes for a proper cure. Okay. So a lot of that you got to take into consideration how heavy the metal is. If it's real heavy, heavy metal, if you leave it in there for the full cure time and then pull it out, the powder continues to cure after about 300 degrees. Mm -hmm. So that big heavy piece of metal is going to stay hot 15, 20 minutes after it's out of the oven. So you got to kind of balance out your after time with the time in the oven and try to get as close to that magic number as you can. Wow, it's quite an art to it and a science. It, it all pretty much comes down to the, uh, the, the oven time and the gun. Uh, with the gun I've got, you've got infinite adjustments as far as mill thickness and voltage. Like home hobby guns usually have a single or a dual voltage, but you can't not adjust the airflow or powder flow. I can adjust all of that, uh, which is why you can get a better finish on stuff like this with a, you know, a good gun. So we'll get them in line, put them in the oven and cook them and see if they work. Okay. Staging area for the oven. So I've got the powder laid on top now. Once it goes in the oven, the temperature will come up on the substrate material. Once it gets probably right around 300 degrees, that powder will melt. Well, your metal's already hot, so the metal's already expanded from the heat the pores have opened up. The powder will melt, form its skin, get in that pores of the metal, and when you pull it all out, it all cools together. So now you've got powder basically in the pores of the metal, which is what binds it on there so well, makes it so hard to get off and so versatile and, and useful out there. Uh, it doesn't have any outgassing, no solvents. Uh, it's environmentally safe, it's food safe, it's USDA approved. I've mm -hmm. done dough hooks and things like that for pizza places. Um, if it does happen to get banged up or chipped off and you eat it, you're not gonna die from it. You're not even gonna get sick from it. Yeah, I smelled nothing when I was in there. No, it has, there, there's some powders that will have a little stink. The non-skids do, because they actually put rubber in them. Uh -huh. So it almost smells like somebody did a burnout back there when you coat with non-skid. Uh -huh. um, the rest of them pretty much is just just what you saw there. It's just cook it up and you gotta enjoy the heat. Cause if you enjoy the heat, yeah, you can't do that because it's already ninety degrees back there. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it is hot, but <laughs> not intolerable. <laughs> uh, come back and see me in the summer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this guy here, I check everything with my laser thermometer. Laser thermometer. So that bracket's actually at three ninety three. Oh my. Which your temperature is about 375, but you have to have the oven set hotter than that or it'll take forever to get to 375 degrees. So just kind of balance your time and once they come out, these guys go in. You'll see those guys in about 20 minutes all bright and shiny. All right, 20 minutes. We'll see you soon. Wheels are ready to come out of the oven. Wow, they are beautiful. Schwabs and have the tires put on these new wheels. They're going to be the prettiest thing on my Model A. <laughs> so you can touch it, they're just a little warm. So they can actually be mounted up now? I'd wait till they were all the way cold before you mount them. Okay. Because if the powder's still hot, it's probably still going to be a little soft. So, but they're good to handle now. I just wouldn't put any tools. Okay.